Well, here we go again. Another day, another innocent, unarmed black kid shot by the police. Is anyone really surprised? Well, I'm not. Not anymore, at least. There's really nothing left that could truly, genuinely shock or surprise me when it comes to the shooting of young black men in America by the police. Why, you ask? Well, because from what I've seen, young black American men seem to be unbelievably stupid. Now, in before cries of, you're a racist, or you can't understand because you're not black, or insert name here, didn't do nothing. One, no I'm not, fucking prove it. Two, if you want to tell me I'm incapable of understanding why pointing a replica firearm at a cop might get you shot just because of the amount of melanin in my skin, well then you're fucking moronic. Three, yes, newest BLM martyr did do something. He pointed an airsoft BB gun at a police officer. I'm not saying the kid was completely retarded, but he definitely wasn't on his way to the local Mensa meeting. Now I can sit here and tell you all of this until I'm blue in the face, but the odds are that you're either listening to me because I confirm what you already believe, or you're just hoping I'll botch my interpretation of the issues here in spectacular enough fashion that you'll have some sort of gotcha moment on which you can base an attack against me. That's fine. I recognize that there will be some difference of views in the people watching my video. So let me give you examples from a range of different publications, and hopefully you'll pick up some differing viewpoints while waiting for me to get around to the news outlet that you happen to agree with. Okay, so let's take the instant headline and intro paragraph from Global News' piece on the shooting. The headlines and bylines tend to have the largest appeals to emotion as they're intended to capture the reader's interest, so I figure they'll be decent indicators of how each publication aims to portray the incident itself. Here we go. 13-year-old Tyree King fatally shot by police in Ohio after pulling out BB gun. A police officer responding to a reported armed robbery shot and killed a 13-year-old boy when the teen allegedly pulled a firearm from his waistband that was later determined to be a BB gun, police said Thursday. Okay. So here we have a succinct and even-keeled reporting of the facts as they are currently known. The phrasing does not appear to have any particular emotional direction and covers the basics of the incident. For those of you who are unfamiliar, Global News is a Canadian publication that covers a wide range of stories. Let's take a little trip across the pond now to see what The Independent, a UK publication, had to say on the matter. Alright, so here's the Independence representation of the Tyree King shooting. Tyree King killing. Police shoot dead black 13-year-old boy in Ohio. Police in Ohio shot dead a black 13-year-old boy who they said brandished a firearm, which turned out to be a BB gun. Teenager Tyree King was taken to hospital in Columbus, where he died just after 8pm on Wednesday evening. Okay. Here we see our first mentions of the victim's race, along with an absence of any information as to what led up to the police officer electing to discharge their firearm. It's not until the third paragraph that the UK Independent mentions that this followed reports of an armed robbery. The use of the term killing also carries with it a more noticeable emotional charge when used instead of shooting. So we have a slightly more race-focused emotional article from the UK outlet. Let's bring it back across the Atlantic and check out an article from the Washington Post. Now, the Washington Post should need no introduction, the popular and long-standing publication that it is. So let's get into the article, shall we? Columbus police fatally shoot Tyree King, 13-year-old with a BB gun. Police in Columbus, Ohio say officers were responding to a report of an armed robbery Wednesday night when they encountered a person who pulled what appeared to be a gun from his waistband. An officer opened fire, hitting this per person multiple times, according to Columbus police officials. He was pronounced dead not long afterward. What we seem to have here is a more clinical approach to the incident. Tyree King's race is never mentioned, though his age is covered. 
there is an absence of emotional language in the opening three paragraphs, and the writer has made diligent reference to the report of an armed robbery leading up to the incident. I have to say, I do prefer to read from the post when it comes to getting my American news, and it's exactly because of this typically level-headed approach to reporting that I get from the writers. With that said, let's move on and, uh, yeah, let's, let's look at some more passionate articles. Oh yes, the Daily Stormer. For those of you who don't know what you're about to be faced with, strap in. Columbus, Ohio. Dat boy Tyree King murdered by a white cop for no reason. Hey, don't look at me. I told you to strap in before I started down this stormy rabbit hole of shit. Tyree, he ain't did nothing. He's just a little boy. He was unarmed. Can, can you see where we're going yet? I sure am excited about the threat of black riots in my own hometown. I, I mean, what a vibrant cultural exchange. Yeah, so you can probably tell by now the Daily Stormer, self-titled as, quote, the world's most deplorable alt-right basket, end quote, is a bit of an online edgelord slash shitposting repository. It is a dark and scary place that, in all honesty, you should probably never visit with any hopes of escaping without some form of scarring. Moving to the other side of the ideological bend as far as publications are concerned, Let's take a look at what Vox has to say. No, they're not as ridiculous as what's been spouted from the Daily Stormer here, but in the past they've, well, they've not been much better. Now, no fancy lead in here, this is what Vox had to say. Tyree King, Columbus Police Shooting. Cops kill 13-year-old boy. Here's what we know about the latest police shooting to draw national attention. Tyree King, a 13-year-old boy, was mistaken for a robbery suspect and his BB gun was mistaken for a real firearm, on Wednesday night when a Columbus, Ohio police officer shot and killed him. I'll be honest, I was expecting far, far worse from Vox based on previous articles, though they do go on in their piece to throw around some very hollow statistics and intellectual half-truths. So I suppose not all was left unrotten in this article. But what's the real message here? What is it that we should all be taking away from this incident? Is it tragic? Absolutely. Does it mean that police are hunting down young black men for sport? Of course not. Do we need to take a look at the factors that led up to the officer's decision to pull the trigger? You're damned right we do. And we need to look at all decisions from all of the players in this urban comedy of errors before we make a judgment call on the shooting itself. So, with that said, what do we know? For starters, we know that an armed robbery was reported to the police, that the responding officers encountered a group of three individuals matching the description of the reported robbers, and that two of the three individuals fled the scene. During the chase, it has been reported that one of the individuals pulled an airsoft pistol complete with laser sight from his waistband, prompting the pursuing officer to open fire. The wounds from this would ultimately lead to the death of Tyree King in hospital later that evening. That's it. That's all we can say for any degree of certainty. We could ask a lot of different questions here, like why King was allowed out at night at just 13 years of age, why he was carrying the airsoft pistol in the first place, and why he ran from police. And all of these are valid questions. But we don't have answers for them just yet. So let's hold up for just one minute because there's something that I would like to ask you. What would you do if I pointed this at you? Just, just imagine I have, you know, arms for a second. What would your reaction be if I reached to my belt, drew this from a holster or my waistband, and aimed it at you? What would your reaction be? How would you know that it was nothing but a replica, an airsoft pistol used for the popular combat sport? If you'd like to try and tell me that your first thought wouldn't be that I was now aiming a very real, very deadly firearm at your face, well then I'd like to call you a liar. Since I'm not an expert though on these things, being a paintballer myself and generally opposed to airsoft as a rule, I'd like to show you this brief clip from KETV7 
where they interview a legitimate expert on the matter of airsoft pistols and real steel firearms. And Brandy, this is not a real gun. Neither is this. They're airsoft pistols. And Omaha's police chief told us today that Cortez Washington pulled the trigger on this one as officers opened fire inside the Wendy's. Now, if you can't tell the difference after looking at them on your TV the last 15 seconds, an expert says, how can anyone else when lives are on the line? Two guns. One fires the real thing. The other, an airsoft pellet. While they don't sound alike... It looks identical. Identical. From the takedown, to the safety features, to the decocking levers, it's all the same. Bob Whaling runs Take Aim Shooting Range in Bellevue. And he spent an entire career in the Air Force Special Forces. I carried a weapon that was exactly the same as that platform right there. Whaling went through the same threat assessment training many law enforcement agents do. And when you can mask the orange tip of an airsoft gun in mere moments... All you're going to do is look for the shape and that being pointed at you. You don't have time to try to read the barrel, try to make a decision on whether that's a real gun or not. By the time you do that, it'd be too late. Folks, if I've said it once, I have really said it a thousand times. If you want to play stupid games, you're going to win stupid prizes. If you pull out anything that looks remotely like a firearm with a police officer or any armed individual present, then you've just put yourself on borrowed time. Because when it comes to the threat of a gun, it only takes a fraction of a second, just a single pull of that trigger, to put lives in danger. As a police officer, you simply cannot decline to respond to the threat of deadly force. Because the person drawing the firearm has to accept the consequences of their actions in forcing you to act. And you have to ensure that you defend your life, the lives of others, and get as many people home to their families as possible. And that includes yourself. And that's all I really have to say on this issue right now. If more information surfaces, which I think is fairly likely, then perhaps I'll make another video to expand upon or correct this one as the evidence requires. If it's some minor details, I'll probably just post them in the description here. Other than that, I would just like to say thank you, a major thank you, to my two lovely patrons, Memory Holiday and Wild Tanuki, for their support. I really appreciate it, you guys. You're beyond awesome. Finally, I would like to remind everyone that if you'd also like to support me what I do, then you can find me at www.patreon.com slash jtviper, and that I've got a whole range of rewards for the different patron levels. Oh, and as with every other video wherein I reference other publications and give statistics, the links to the cited sources are all in the description down below. If you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up or thumbs down, you know, if you didn't like it, give me a little pop on the red subscription button there. And if you'd like to keep in touch with me, best place you can find me is at JTViper1991 on the good old Twitter. Thanks for watching, everybody.